Hey, hey, howdy. Just before Christmas last year, three people got into an elevator in a very posh hotel. One was a honest politician. One was a very generous lawyer and Santa Claus. It was Christmas time. And just before the doors opened, they all noticed a hundred dollar bill lying on the floor. Which one picked it up? Santa Claus, of course, because the other two don't exist. Hey, just saying. Now we got France, Normandy, beaches, allied troops. This happened in 1944 on June 6, just a few days ago. And you know, with the virus and, and all these riots and all this unrest going on in the world, very few people paid attention to this. It was a life-changing event. It truly was. It was remarkable. I've been there, and if you ever have an opportunity, if airplanes ever get flying again, to go there, you should. It's moving. And one of the few times I'd like to thank uh, former Prime Minister Harper of Canada because he did a great job there. He had a uh, Canadian pavilion constructed, and it's wonderful. I mean, the Canadian soldiers, they performed so well and so many perished that day. 20,000 men, young men, died within a course, within the course of a few hours and you know I stood up there in a German bunker and, and they're there and they, they're big and they're ominous and I looked out and I thought wow all these people died right here and, and I re recall all the movies that I've seen and all the boomity boom stuff and these guys are coming up to the beaches and it's very very moving I mean this uh, coronas thing and, and everything else again it's pushed a lot of stuff back good stuff not that this was good. It was, well, it was good, but, but, but uh, because it was one of the most remarkable feats in military history, and it was good that it, that it uh, paved the way for the outcome that, that was achieved in World War II. Just uh, wanted to share that with you because we all need a moment to remember that things aren't all bad. I mean, viruses and riots and people killing each other and, and hating each other and telling us that we hate them when we don't. It, it, it's, a, it's a crazy thing that's going on out there, and, and we need to know that there's some good things. Uh, Santa Claus is one of them, too. Former Vice President Joe Biden just the other day claimed that 10 to 15 percent of all Americans are just not very good people. Actually, Joe, you're wrong about that. It's more like 50 percent of Americans are not very good people. That's all the Democrats in America. You know, in Canada, <laughs> you, I get a lot of emails. I'm a member of the Conservative Party, and I get the emails from all the folks. And, and you know, the most active one with his email, I think, is Peter McKay. And he recently sent this to me and to, you know, the masses of the great unwashed. Conservatives only win when we are united. And I know what I'm talking about because in 2003, I worked with Stephen Harper to reunite the long, broken conservative movement. Maybe, but I guess you're united, reunited, <laughs> united. You brought people together from the factions of the right. But keep in mind, 70% of all Canadians more or less have never voted conservative. And, and there's four little left parties, some big, some little uh, on the left. So, so if they ever united under one name or one banner, and they might be, because they're the same. They used to have differences. They don't now. The NDP party and the Liberal Party, the Green Party, the Bloc Party, maybe not the Bloc so much, but certainly the first three, they're the same. They have different names, but they all live in the same house, right? And, and I think they share the same bed, and, and the Bloc is close, except they speak another language. So, so if they united, even those three, the Conservatives, based on the numbers that, that are in Canada now, would never win, ever, ever. They only win now because people vote against someone else. And, and it's terrible that you have to vote against somebody versus voting for somebody. So, McKay, while I appreciate your emails and, and I appreciate your efforts, you need to kick it up a notch because you're doing the Einstein thing. You know, you're keeping on doing the same thing, hoping for a different result, and, and you need to change. You just you can't just unite the conservative people. There's a lot of people out there who want to do what's right, and, and you need to have new policies for them. It's the party that, that's missing things. All you're doing is talking to the converted. If I was a preacher and I had a church and it was 30% occupied, I'd be out looking for atheists because I want them to attend so I can talk to them. I want Want to convert them to my faith, right? And, and even partially, I want them to get it. I want them to understand me. Nobody understands you or the conservative people. That includes me. And, and I think as a leader, you need to address that. Not just talk to the, I don't know, you're already talking to the people who get it. I mean, you, but the other guys don't get it. You know why? 
is because you don't offer anything new. Everything the Conservative Party in Canada has is pretty much what the other left-wing parties have because it's really not right-wing. It doesn't offer new things. It doesn't give freedom. It doesn't give term limits. It doesn't get the government out of business. It doesn't get rid of red tape. Oh, there's a lot of things I could talk for an hour. Go to the website that we have, rightedition.com, and even punch the uh, Canadian content site, and you'll see about 40 items there of things that, that if they brought into it, it, it would help. It would help a lot. Like for instance, in Canada, there's, there's parliamentary immunity. You're allowed to lie in the House of Parliament. And, and you can. The law says you can, and they do. And the press takes their lies, and they can. And they put it into the newspaper, and they do. And people read it, and they think it's a fact. And most things that you read, they're not true. There's a whole bunch of untruths because they're allowed to do it. That's one of the first things that should be kicked out or, or put into law. You can't lie. And if you do lie, I remember John Cushan years ago when he ran, he says, elect me and I'll get rid of the GST. He got elected and he said, ha ha, gotcha. I mean, that's fraud. He should be put in jail. Da da da. A fall election, they say, they being the left wing newspapers, that it's a possibility and a sweet spot for liberals to win a majority. I don't buy into that because they already have a majority effectively because the NDP is the same as them. And the NDP says, do this, get rid of guns, get rid of blah, 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 and we'll be on your side. Well, that's what the prime mistake wants anyway, and that's what he's got. All the money we spend on government, it's a darn good thing that we don't get what we pay for. Hey, <laughs> we don't get the government that we pay for. That's what I meant to say. The Senate in Canada. The Senate is a group of unelected people who... It's not a job, it's a position, and, and they, they hardly ever show up. They make $157,000 a year, 157 grand. And, and uh, now they got a raise, the people that are in charge of committees and so on, they got a raise of $10,100 a year. I mean, everybody's starving to death, right? And, and there's no jobs, everybody's lost their job. This virus has taken its toll, and all the politicians are getting raises. Now you have the unelected ones getting raises. Trudeau and his gang of all the MPs and so on, they got a raise a month ago. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is what they do. These are your leaders, right? And, and they said, well, we need the raise because we have meetings. Well, they have about two meetings a year. And the last meeting lasted nine minutes. And I'm sure that all happened, uh, all that happened in that time was, let's have this meeting to decide when the next meeting is. That's pretty much all you can do in nine minutes. You know what? Everyone looks to government to fix the problem. What they don't get is it's the government that created the problem. So what's up with that? I mean, oh, I get it. They are the problem. You need a government that, that can fix stuff. And the Conservatives have such an opportunity. Maxine Bernier is trying, and he has an opportunity as well. I mean, he could still make some headway here. Somebody needs to come in and, and address things from a different perspective. And, and these guys don't. It's more of the same. Ah! I think I'll go out and get drunk and be somebody, and then I can address this better tomorrow. See what this is doing to me. I'll come back. Be happy, though, because you know what? Underneath this big pile of manure, if you keep digging, you'll find a pony. Hey.